Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Futures Trading Room. My name is Anka Metcalf, and today is Monday. It is the last trading day of November. It's November 30th today, and it's 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, first, let's begin with the economic releases for today. All day long, we have the OPEC meetings that actually have started yesterday. So this is going to have a high impact on oil and also, obviously, the mini S&P, which is energy stock rich. Uh, also at 9.45, we have the Chicago PMI and this is moderate news release. So that means that it may have a relative impact on price action and it occurs 15 minutes right after the open. And we also have the pending home sales that are coming in at 10 a.m. Eastern. And this is also coinciding with one of the major reversal times in the market. Uh, again, on positive news uh, from uh, the home sales uh, numbers, uh, we may see probably a boost in the futures indices price action. So let's get down to the analysis for the trading session today. First off, let's begin with uh, the overall relative strength weakness into these uh, indices. So uh, we're starting the day with the Dow a little bit more under pressure than the M&E S&P and NASDAQ, which you can probably see right now uh, from the chart that NASDAQ is leading with 20 points to the upside, that the Dow is lagging a little bit. In the sense that it's down 0.45%, it is down 134 points, but don't forget that last week we had a mega winner in the Dow and Dow had overperformed uh, in comparison to the other indices. The S&P is down barely seven points and uh, it is down 0.19%. So it's basically relatively flat-ish compared to where it closed on Friday. And also NASDAQ, like I've mentioned before, it is up about 20 points right now and 0.15%. And we're having 0.29% Russell uh, down with five points down. Now I'm going to take you very quickly. So we are going to run through these indices. Uh, and of course, we're going to run through a couple of commodities uh, before the open. And uh, let's uh, take a look at the structure. I'm pretty sure you guys can see right now that I'm displaying only just one chart and I uh, forget to mention, please give me a one if you guys can hear me and also if you can see uh, the screen. I uh, would greatly appreciate it. Just want to make sure everything is okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. All right. So uh, now uh, let's take a look at the Dow. And as you can see here, we have pre-mapped the Dow activity. Uh, like I said, we're coming in from a relatively uh, very strong week. This is last week's trading activity here. And you can see that it's defined by support. We have a double bottom formation on smaller time frames that is reflected also on the weekly time frames, which is in, at the 29100 spot. And this is where we were trading last week. And we had a very big boost in price thus taking the price above 30,000, creating a new all time high, 30,165. And this is where we punched in last Friday. And so far we're trading inside week, still very early, only Asian session and um, also London session that we have created this candle from. So still very early on in the game. So basically in the overnight trading session, the price was under pressure into the mini Dow. So that means that it came back here, trading below the 200 SMA on the 1H chart. But from the daily structure, you can see, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit here. So you can see that it's not so weak. And this is the reason why we got the bounce because it's trading right off the 10 exponential moving average and also off a of minor, uh, minor resistance, cre minor support created from these prior highs from this resistance point. So this resistance right here created the support for current price action. Thus, you're seeing the tail right now into the e mini down. So let's take it back to the 1H chart and let's see what we have going on right now. 
Uh, basically, what happened in uh, last week's trading session is we had the dynamic push into the indices into the 30,000. We uh, had a very, I would say, um, big boost on Monday. And this boost on Monday was created by, uh, was created actually by another vaccine news. Uh, that ramped the price higher. And again, what we can expect for, um, let's say for the trading session today is that we're finding some kind of balance into this spot. Now this spot, like I mentioned before, represents the daily to uh, the daily 10 EMA, right? So that's where we got the little boost. The, but this area is very important because it represents the breakout spot. So this is the area where we broke out last week from, from this pop up higher. So this is very, very, uh, it, this is a very interesting spot. Now, the price is under pressure because it's trading from these prior lows. And these prior lows right here are creating resistance for current price action. And in fact, you can see that we also have the 20 SMA and the 50 SMA that are creating selling pressure for price. The price right now is actually into these moving averages uh, where, uh, on the 1H chart, which are the 20 SMA, the 50 SMA as resistance, and we have support, the 200 SMA. So the price is caught into that web of moving averages, right? So we need to expand higher or lower depending on how it is trading. Obviously, we want to see for higher, we want to see a break of 29,800 in order to have that bullish above spot and for the bearish side well not so fast because as long as we have the support we have this 200 sma we're gonna still uh, we're still not into the bearish mode even though we're having here like an inside bar up and down but that's not very significant so we're gonna have to wait for the reshuffling into the open for more clarity into the setup so far no trades into the mini doubt before the open and we are literally two minutes away from the open uh, for the m and &E SMP, we have support, also confluence area right here, minor support as well, along with the 200 SMA at a round number, at a whole number at the 3600. We got the pop and also we have the 10 EMA on the daily. And this is where we popped higher. Now, the SMP looks a little better because it's leaving behind those moving averages. So it does, it's not caught into those, uh, into those MAs. Uh, we're also seeing a topping tail right here, but this is very normal. We're going to have to wait for the reshuffling into the New York trading session until it clears all that out and it finally tries to find its own directional bias. From the daily structure, weekly structure, monthly structure, we're into a very bullish market environment that can potentially continue higher. The more you look at this segment right here with support at 3,600 and 3,650 for resistance, this is nothing else but a very sideways uh, range. And um, also we're, and also very choppy price action. We had a high, we had a low, we had a double bottom, we had a punch into the highs. Uh, right off the open, and then we uh, came to revisit uh, the support spot into the 3600 again, and now we're back into the core of this range. So again, any trades right here are going to have a 50-50 shot. What that means is that 50% chances of losing money into the trade. So that's the reason why we have to wait for the really good setup in order to uh, have a trade and make some money uh, in the trading session today. Also, the NASDAQ uh, and uh, uh, like I said, NASDAQ a little stronger. We saw the rotation back into these NASDAQ stocks, which uh, definitely um, had a big impact on the index as well. And we're still looking for some clues in the stocks. I will keep you updated after the open. Uh, but definitely, this is a pull. Th this is definitely again. Uh, I just want to uh, shrink it up so you can see it right here. We were trading for more than more than two weeks in a very range bound, uh, range bound action in Nasdaq, and finally we broke above this range on Friday. So on Friday we got the boost to the upside. We came back, but notice one thing that is very interesting here. So we have been trading into an uptrend. So with that, in the sense that we have a low, we have higher lows, we have, an, again, a really big platform here, which represents another higher low into the 11,800. And since then, we have been creating these higher lows, higher lows, and higher lows. 
So this is this is going to be top watch for the trading session today. Obviously, we're going to have more price evidence from stocks that we will monitor throughout the uh, day trading uh, day trading portion of the day. Uh, but again, here, uh, this is something very interesting that I have noted on the chart. This may be a really massive breakout from the weekly, because if you're looking, <clears throat> excuse me, on the weekly, this is a really massive bull flag formation. So first of all, we have resistance support, and then these extensions can take the price higher over 1300, actually very close to 1500, 15,000, I'm sorry, not 100, 15,000. So 13,000, 13,500 and 15,000 for an escape higher. Also the smallest cluster that we need to look at is the one with support at 11,800 that I have mentioned, which is represents last week's low and prior week lows as well. So we have a double bottom massive formation on the 1H and 4H charts. And here we are going to probably experience a massive breakout if we should have uh, these, uh, these uh, NASDAQ stocks overperform uh, through the trading session today. So this is going to be a top watch. Now, you guys know that a lot of things happen and a lot of uh, these indices reshuffle, uh, but this is going to be a top watch. So far, nothing to trade here. We're noticing that the price action is optimum for a breakout and for a continuation higher uh, more than the Dow and the M&E S&P. So NASDAQ, let's keep a close eye on NASDAQ, is trading above the MAs. And it actually, since uh, uh, since um, uh, what was that, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Eastern, it has been trying to trade uh, uh, trying to trade above the 20 SMA and the 10 EMA. So this is very conducive for a continuation higher back into these highs into the 337. All right, so uh, let's continue with RTY. Uh, RTY very strong. This can actually be. Uh, a swing trade opportunity. We have a lot of tails that I want to show you here onto the daily. So on the daily chart, just, just zoom in a little bit. We have one, two, three. So these are three massive days that we have uh, gravitated into. And also this can be, you can see them right here. So tail came back into this spot into the 28 back up back into the 28, back up, back into the 28 and back up. So if we break above 1860 throughout the trading session today, this can potentially be incredibly bullish and can actually be a potential really good swing trade for a continuation higher. And we do have the extensions because we talked on Friday about it. And the first target is going to be into the uh, 69 to 70. And we have, again, another massive target that goes into the 2000 level. So this is going to be very interesting to watch. Again, I'm, I will have it on my chart. This may not be a trade for everyone or may be a trade for, I mean, I don't see the reason why you should not dab into a little bit of swing trading. Now, I find that swing trading is the easiest way to make money rather than you know, uh, then day trading, it's much more profitable. Yes, I agree. It has a little bit of wider stop, but hey, that's what position sizing is for. So uh, in this particular case, this would be the breakout into the 60, anywhere, anywhere between 60 and 65. This could uh, have a relatively, uh, relatively wide entry spot. Uh, the stop is going to have to be under 25. So 25, well, you can use 30. 30 is a little bit, uh, you know, um, let's say tight, but over 60 by 30. And again, remember, you can position size using micros, using full size contract. It all depends on the size of your account. But this is a very bullish channel breakout right here that I have mentioned. And this is the support from the 1H. This is one, two, three tops. And you can see that we have equal highs and equal lows right here. So it's a very good uh, channel uh, to, be, uh, to be trading. All right, I'm gonna bring uh, also uh, also CL, which is oil. Again, remember that OPEC meeting going on. Uh, we're trading inside day, and we are trading within inside Friday's parameters and also Thursday parameters. So we're trading into the same parameters for the for the last three days. What this means is that. Same like Russell, we can expect the breakout over 46 and change, 46.27, 46.20-ish uh, uh, area for an extension higher. 
Now, remember that this extension higher, and I'm let, let me just show you something out here. We're trading right into this 20 SMA right here. Okay, so that's the stall for the price action. And again, it's a, a take a trading with high, lower high, lower high, lower high right here. So this may be an inflection point, a decision point right now. All right, so with that being said, uh, the last but not least is GC, all right? And uh, GC is, let me put it here on default. Here we go. This massive pink uh, rectangle that you guys see here is actually the wide support area, okay? So from anywhere from the 1800 all the way to the 1650-ish level, we can expect a rotation to happen. Now, what's very interesting, but not very significant, and we don't have price evidence yet, is that from the one hour chart, we have been trying to bottom right here into the spot since last night at nine o'clock. So you can see here, nine o'clock low, we had another low at midnight, we had another retest at 5 a.m. And then we're still trying to cluster, but we're still getting a lot of pressure from minor resistance, from, uh, from this support zone that's creating minor resistance from this 20 SMA rejection. So we are still not advancing anywhere yet. Uh, the four hour chart is also very messy. We don't have any kind of clue that we're gonna get a rotation. So that's uh, going to be um, definitely not a pattern that we can trade. And also I know that some of, uh, I know that one, uh, one trader in this room uh, didn't take profits in natural gas. And like I said, in natural gas, this is something that you have to, you know, just live through it, <laughs> okay? This is how it works. Uh, you, uh, when you trade these commodities, you have to pretty much stay in until you see the green to red. And the green to red came uh, one, uh, the first time around came here and then it slid a little bit lower. And then we had the inside bar continuation higher, higher. And then we had the contract roll. And now we have the rotation that is happening here with an inside bar from uh, Friday. And finally today, we're uh, getting outside of this inside bar creating a, a continuation higher. And if you guys recall, the trade that we call was right here into the, uh, the um, I think it was like in the 85 or so or something like that. And then we had targets into the 90s and uh, so on. Uh, but again, you would be in the money right now. So again, with natural gas, you have to take it uh, small. Uh, take Remember, you can still trade the mini, which is the QG. So this is the full size contract and QG is approximate half the size of natural gas. And you can see that it's trading absolutely the same. Okay, now QG, you know, and I know there are a lot of traders that day trade natural gas, natural gas, and that is the NG. Uh, that is uh, a little bit better uh, to day trade, but uh, if you're considering, you know, day trading QG, that's not a good option because it's very, very, very thin. So this can be also only seen as an investment purpose or as um, possibly a swing trade. So swing trade is very, very good. Uh, and again, here you would be above your break even spot. So. All right, so now we're going to continue to our active watch. Let's take uh, take it uh, take it down to our uh, charts right here, and uh, we're going to immediately put them on the five minute chart and start watching for some uh, for some formations. Right now, a lot of chop into the market, a lot of indecision, just uh, not a, a really pleasant place to be right now but we're just gonna watch and uh, stock a trading opportunity. Remember that in trading, it's very important to have and to uh, you know, look for those big wins, small wins, break-even trades are a gift from the trading gods. And then again, uh, we're gonna look for those, um, uh, for those uh, small losses. All right, so um, like I said, right off the bat right now, I don't see any setup that is forming still into the morning fleecing. And in about five minutes, we have news. One thing that I am looking at right now, and I told you before the market opened, is that NASDAQ is getting a little bit of more love today. Um, I'm seeing like a lot of 
a lot of participation here uh, in NASDAQ, uh, AMD, Apple uh, that I have on my charts um, that are uh, a little bit higher. Baba is under pressure. Uh, but other than that, I still, I, it's still too very early to determine, uh, you know, in which way these indices are going to start moving. All right. So no questions in the first hour. And after the first hour, we open the floor. And actually, when we're out of the trades, we're going to be opening the floor for questions. All right. Now let's start actively watching. Uh, the one thing that I have on my chart right now, um, basically NASDAQ is top front and center right here and the M&E S&P. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of volatility. Take a look at the size of these candles right here. Okay, so the size is really, really, really impressive. Uh, we have 286 for the high in NASDAQ and we have 252 for the low. And this is only one bar in the five minute. It's not even a setup. And that's like 34, 34 points. Just this bar alone, a bar on the five minute. A bar on the five minute is 34. All right. Uh, so like I was saying, you know, no action right now. Um, the mini SMP uh, trying to fill the gap, and that is uh, the gap from Friday. So on Friday, we gapped up, we moved a little bit higher, and then in the afternoon trading session, we try to fill the gap, and now we're going for the gap fill from that Friday in the mini SMP. I'm going to walk you through all the indices. So uh, YM was the one index, not only that fill the gap, but it's just just moving lower and lower, but it's still trading into that uh, 10 EMA on the daily. So still bullish at this point. Uh, small, tiny baby, two minute rotation, five minute inside bar, three minutes left into the completion of the five minute bar before it possibly may do a short squeeze that YM. So why am not that bad. Here's the release in NASDAQ. You can see NASDAQ that swished to the downside. Um, and let me monitor Russell here. Russell holding the gap from Friday and in fact, holding the support and actually trading higher than the New York trading session support on Friday. So uh, Russell, Russell continues to be very bullish. So um, again, this may be an option for us to uh, potentially have a swing on our hands, this RTY. And let's see. Um, Apple very strong with the weekly rotation. These are all very strong NASDAQ stocks right now. A lot of balancing. The market is still very thin, very, very low volume in the futures uh, and also in stocks that I'm seeing right now. Still very, very early, and it's Monday.
Peloton very strong this morning. Don't forget that Zoom will report earnings today after the close. I know uh, many of you guys are in the stock swing trader program and uh, I have made an update on that um, ZM trade that we have on. I had had hit two huge targets for us. Um, we initiated at 446 and we had targets 460, 470, and we have the next target into 500. And um, very, very strong. Now remember, you know, if your plan is not to hold through earnings, earnings are a big doozy for, um, there are many surprises. You could see a gap down of, I don't know, $50, $200 or gap up within the same parameters or more. Uh, AMD strong as well. Let's see how the market and what the market is going to do here. Okay, so Moderma is now applying for emergency vaccine approval. This just came out. <laughs> Laura, totally right on. <laughs> I know. We all need it. In fact, we should all be on our bikes right now trading on the treadmill. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Like we should totally, <laughs> or at least, you know, not sit when we're trading. I'm trying to get one of those desks, you know, that lifts. A lot of these uh, stocks that I have on my watch here, they're trying to bottom. So they had the swoosh down and they're trying to bottom. I don't know if they're going to bottom or not. Let's see. Oh my God, Jennifer, you do? Oh no. You know where, Jennifer, um, I saw one at Costco. I saw one at Costco. I saw it online, it was like $350 and it was really nice, really, really nice. It was white and it was digital. Yeah, and it was like, $3.99 and then I went to Costco with like 200 something. So it was cheaper in store than online. We really, I mean, seriously, we, we need, uh, we need to, um, <laughs> we need to do something. We're very staticky. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. That's totally true. Come on, market, just settle down. Market is all over the place. We need to let it do its thing.
Oh my goodness, Jennifer. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's bad, you know, sitting so much. And I do the same. Like I sit a lot, you know. Laurie, let's hope we're going to get a little bit of more snow than what we have right now. Okay, so we're seeing a mild rotation in NASDAQ. We're just trying to kill time right now because we don't have anything, you know, to act on. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, going back to gold, I want to show you something interesting. Uh, so you can see here that today's trading session, this is a weekly chart, but today's trading session took the price right into this 50 SMA right here, which may be a little bit interesting to watch. That's why I'm watching it on the four hour to see if we get any kind of rotation. All right, here's a rotation that is happening in NASDAQ. All right, we're getting a bit of a pop here. The NASDAQ is still a little stronger right now. I like the 15 minute in it that is trying to set off. Um, so here's the thing with NASDAQ Friday support is at 12,200 and it came close to that point and came into like 225 or 220 ish 220 ish to 225. Let's see what the low here was. Yeah. 223. It's leaving a wide tail. Really wide tail here. No action so far.
Russell is not rotating at all. See, now NASDAQ is back into this resistance from the high velocity zone. Uh, the Dow is having trouble getting over this 660. So that was the short squeeze of it. Just very, very tiny. All right, here's an action with a topping tail right here. This is the moment of truth. Mm. Just a lot of chop guys today. Let's have patience and see if we're gonna get something here. We have two minutes and we have pending home sales. Let's see how pending home sales, they may influence because like I said, they, they are going to have a medium impact on price. All right, couple of seconds left. It's 9.59. Brand new candle and the candle popping up. We have a consolidation in the Dow. Pending home sales number or numbers are out. The previous number was minus 2.2%. The forecast, it came exactly in line with the forecast. The forecast, oh, I'm sorry. No, it didn't come in line. The forecast was 1.1 and the actual is minus 1.1%. So not that great, not that great. Hey, Michael, no trades yet. All right, now the market needs to digest these numbers and see whether this is going to be 
the decisive factor. No other releases for the trading session today, by the way. All right, so we're still trading in the same mess. Please guys, don't hurry and jump into anything. This is not the right time. There's absolutely nothing in the market right now. Not up, not down. Just a big, big mess. We're still holding the 10 AM lows, guys. So we're still um, in three indices here in the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ. So let's see if we're going to continue to hold.
Well, we're still holding the 10 a.m. lows, and as long as we're holding the 10 a.m. lows, we cannot ignore it, and we may have a breakout over the 10 a.m. highs, which is right here, 64 into the Dow, possibly S&P over 28, and well, NASDAQ is a little bit choppy here, but we have to look at the 69 to 70 level break, possibly for higher. Russell is a bit choppy. Um, the stocks are uh, gravitating towards sideways right now as well. Take a look, new low in Russell here, and we just broke the 10 a.m. low in the Dow, so we have two indices that are weaker. We have Russell and YM right now. Just a bunch of tails, guys. So far, nothing. All right, Russell trying to rotate off of this double bottom 1835. It's a little boring session today. Yeah, TB, I agree. I agree. And here's the level. It's from the whole overnight trading session, all London session. They have all defended the spot right here.
Let's see if uh, 1030, it will be our prime time trigger time today as well. Definitely a rocky start on Monday, very rocky start. Uh-oh, NASDAQ, new low here. But still holding the 10 a.m. low. Exactly, Steve. End of the end of the month trading. Totally. No action, guys. Very quiet. Notice that I'm very, very quiet. I'm just stalking. Nothing that I recognize now. 
no technical patterns, just a bunch of uh, chop stock wise the same. <laughs> Laura, I just saw your post now. <laughs> The market is totally hungover. <laughs> I told you guys, we're also going to get very low volume. So, um, you know, uh, obviously last week, low volume, uh, last three days, very low volume. Uh, then like Steve mentioned, it's also the end of the month. So remember, there are a lot of things that are uh, that are going on right now. A lot of shenanigans. By the way, guys, that GBTC still moving higher. Yeah, Sean, <laughs> yeah, I just saw your post now. Uh, Bitcoin, yeah. Yep, yep. I was going to say that Bitcoin may be setting up for a daily rotation, uh, but it already gapped up today massively. All right, so um, NASDAQ is joining the weakness here uh, in uh, along with uh, Russell and the Dow. Okay, so uh, last minute news, OPEC agrees to wait until Tuesday to reach consensus with non-OPEC on 2021 oil output uh, cuts policy. Wow, just a bunch of uh, chop in the market, guys.
the Dow is trying to rotate here, but not room for not room at all for the short squeeze. I'm gonna put this back to the five minute. I was hoping to see some kind of 30 minute rotation happening. Hey, Ralph, you in GBTC? Oh, okay. Sorry, I haven't had the time to uh, scroll for comments yet. Wow, this market is just, I, I'm just falling asleep here. Like literally, like I'm telling you, like this is total snooze. Tails, bottoming tails, topping tails, back into support, bounce a little bit off support. Uh, we either need a big wash to the downside so we can, you know, have some kind of opportunity. If the market would just let go, just big, you know, kind of wash into the market and then we could go for a short squeeze or a big pop and then a reset. But right now it's just tight and it's just going up and down, up and down without, you know, a really good entry opportunity, nothing. Yeah, exactly, squirrely market. <sighs> Hey, Andrew, good morning. Yeah, uh, we've been in GBTC since July, end of July, but we have been trading it on and off since January. But then since July, I decided to hold it as my wild card for election. And we did really good with it.
All right, uh, we're three minutes away from our prime time trigger time. I hate these bars with the tail here that that are setting into support. Not a good indication of strength, but the market is junk today, guys. Absolutely junk. Absolutely nothing here, guys. Yeah, let's see, Joe. <laughs> I'm just waiting for something because like um, every time when you get a snoozy market, you feel like you're losing your focus when the market is fast and when it's doing setups, you know, you know, our brains are uh, acting differently than they are right now. Like right now, it's like, oh, OK, there's nothing going on here, so. The thing is here that um, the shorting part, yeah, snoozy. Um, I'm not very excited about the shorting part, not unless we get some kind of a retest. Uh, the reality is that uh, this 3,600 has been defended. 3,620 and 3,600 is super defended here in um, on higher time frames. We may get a flush throughout the trading session today, maybe later today. And um, hmm. And then we may have a turnaround Tuesday tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. This is the channel support right here. Now, any rotation that may happen here, so Laura, any kind of one hour to four hour rotation that is happening off the blue line, if we should get one, that could potentially be a very aggressive entry for that swing that we talked about at the beginning of the session.
All right. So this would be the time when we should be looking for some kind of a setup. That's right, OG man. That's right. So still my preferred would be NASDAQ here. NASDAQ two minute rotation, not a lot of room to go for the short squeeze. The target here would be uh, 220. 220 can be a decision point in NASDAQ because from 220, mm, from 220, it could turn around. So if we get a pop in NASDAQ into 220, that may become a shorting opportunity there. We'll see. In any case, we need to see some smaller 15 minute candles. That would be the clue. Now we're coming in. Okay, now we got that washed down. Okay, let's see. Any retest may potentially enter a short into NASDAQ. We're still trading within Friday's range, so don't forget that. We're not that weak. Yeah, that's right. Uh, contracts for difference, Michael.
All right, now we're into support. Okay, Russell had, all right, so any retest right now can potentially be short squeeze or we could take it for a short squeeze and then reverse and short. I'm not very excited about this market. But we have some release and this is good because it released some of that pressure. Uh, the price distance itself from the moving averages. So that's good. Really huge hourly bar. If you guys are looking on the hourly charts, we are having some huge hourly bars in all of these indices. Uh, in mini SMP as well. Take a look at here. A uh, huge bar. This is an area of minor support confluence. We have the 200 SMA here on the one hour, as you can see, that I made a uh, note of 3,600. So if we should get a short squeeze here, Hopefully, let's see, I'm going to take it back to the five minute. I'm going to watch it on my screen on multi time frames. Hey, Jake. Okay, now, now the market is releasing, okay? We may have something today, let's see. So one thing that we should note is that the market was trying to hold into 10 o'clock and then from 10 o'clock into uh, about 10.30 when it started to uh, release the pressure to the downside, it just, uh, you know, it was just so heavy. Okay, so now we just have to wait, uh, wait for the, uh, wait for a setup. In fact, we have been doing that all day. Wow, this is some big, big, big hourly release bar right here.
All right, don't jump in anything, guys, right now. We don't know what the market is going to do here. Uh, it just went, NASDAQ just went uh, daily down, just testing the lows from Friday and trading below Friday's, uh, Friday's lows. And we have the MNE S&P. Don't be so fast on shorting here. The MNE S&P is right into support, right here into the 3,600 area. It's also trading on the 10 EMA on the daily chart. Uh, Russell, just update you guys on what I'm seeing in the market, approaching that 10 EMA and also minor support at 1800. So we're not far away from that point. So this may seem like rotation point 101. We're also having Russell on the 15 minute SMA, New York trading session charts. We have also YM that is trading into the 10 EMA. Okay, we're getting a little bit of bounce here. So we had the, I would call this a 945 reversal. And then this is nothing else but a prolonged 10 o'clock slide. Okay, get ready, guys. We had a very quick two minute rotation. Very quick five minute rotation uh, in uh, the mini SP and the Dow, no, fi no five minute rotation in NASDAQ. Very quick YM here. About a 10 point risk in SP. So keep in mind the risk is very high. We're bouncing off of the levels that I just mentioned, that 3,600 in S&P, that 10 EMA on the daily chart. I would like S&P here. Um, it has a one-to-one -one R. Um, the entry would be somewhere 3,602 and 3,602-ish. 3602 uh, not defined yet, just hold on. And I'm seeing a target into 36.10 potentially. The risk is very wide. Remember position size, you can use half the risk. These are very aggressive trades. The reason why I'm not very excited to execute right now is because we're into massive resistance. We have uh, an oversold pivot uh, from the New York trading session at 36.03. We also have the confluence level from a 10 EMA right there. 
And uh, we also have that minor sport 200 SMA from the 1A chart that now translates into minor resistance. See, they're all happening right here. So this is a trifecta that may create selling pressure. So let's just not rush. Let's see if we create a hook. So the watch right now is for the m and &E SMP. The watch is for the m and &E SMP, that's it. Again, very small target compared to the, uh, compared to the risk. All volatility trades are asymmetric. It's something that you should already know by now. All right, brand new candle. See, 3603 would be the trigger. Yes, very aggressive long, 3603. And the stop is going to be the low of today's New York trading session is going to be 35.91. And we're going to look for a target. I'm, I'm telling you, the targets are that big disappointment, 36.05. Now the target is smaller, uh, 36, uh, 30, uh, 36. Oh, seven. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're in 3603 just triggered. Okay, oh, five, oh, seven. And let's see, uh, we're going to have a wait in 10, but I'm just going to type 3610 rather into that spot. We're going to go by trailing. This is a short squeeze scenario from the 200 SMA uh, on the 1H chart and also from the uh, daily 10 EMA. And the four hour has uh, is bouncing off the 50 SMA and it's rather double bottom here at 3602 where we initiated um, the uh, the um, the entry uh, 3605 initiated uh, already hit target one I'm gonna let you know I'm gonna trail this entire position because it has such a um, messy target zone most likely I'm gonna take some action once it once it gets into that 3607 ish I'm gonna come with details on that. Okay, five minute rotation in Russell, five minute rotation in NASDAQ this is the short squeeze. The Dow has achieved that 10 EMA tap on. NASDAQ still has room. The SP has room and Russell has a little bit of room. All right, we need to see the price uh, take out. 3606 in order to advance to 3607. Yeah, Joe. I mean, like great minds think alike. <laughs> okay, let's see it over 06. It has 0575. Here it is, 06. We have one tick to 07. That's target two. I mean, I could get like if I could get, you know, uh, anything I could get here um, would be fantastic. OK, anything I could get here would be fantastic. All right. No updates on the trail. Just stay in. I'm reading price action. I'm going to update you guys by the second as soon as I see, as I see some development so far. Stay in. All right, we need to print that 07 in order to start moving a little bit higher towards that 3610. Now that 3610 is kind of like squishing down and swooping down a little bit. It's not 10 anymore. But the more I, if we get into the 36, here's the 3607 target right on the dot. Tap and release a little bit back to the 05s.
we're back into um moving average web we're trading between the 10 ema and the 20 sma on the two minute chart so we need to print over 3607 in order to start the ascent towards 08910 and this is the battleground here if we create that mini hook over here then we can rotate Come on, we need to do a little sandwich here, one minute sandwich. We need to print that over 3607, 3607 and a quarter or a half would be very helpful for initiation higher. There you go, we have a brand new candle just popped up right now. On the five, on the, uh, on the five, on the two, on the one, Look for that 3607 and a quarter for higher. That would push the price higher. Oh, seven and a quarter. That's what we need. And then we're going to see the 08s. Anything I could get on a day like today is going to be a big gain. And then we're going to be done. All right, come on, closing in, closing in, closing in. We have a high of, uh, of 06.75. Remember, two ticks away from that pressure point, 07.25. The 15 minute doesn't look bad to keep a lot open with the original size, but I don't know if I want to do that today. Um, see, this is the five minute and the 15 minute. We are three minutes away. And if we print that 0720, uh, that 0725, we could start squeezing harder uh, into the 3610 and most likely. 10, 11, so it's gonna go in very small increments. So we're gonna have 10, 11, boom, we have it. We have it, we have it. Nice, 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 nice right here. Uh, we have the 0725 guys. All right, here it is. Uh, we may start squeezing a little bit more, like I said, um, into the 09, 10, 11, this is gonna be like point by point all the way probably into the 13, 14 spot. Okay, the big doozy is going to come at 3608. That is a huge pressure point. If we break above that, then we can continue higher. There's also minor resistance from price action from 2.50 a.m. Eastern. Okay, we had a high of 3608 so far. Come on, 3608, climbing higher. That's five points, guys, in the bag. Now six points in the bag. Come on. On a day like today, I could take any point right here and consider it like a major win. We're above the tiny MA on the five minute, which is good, which is good. But now we're running into this chop fest right here. Two minutes into the close of this 15 minute candle. This is setting rather bullishly right here. <laughs> TB. Yeah, it looks that way. It looks that I was getting really bored. I thought like, oh my gosh, we're not going to have a trade today. But hey, all right, we're three ticks away from um, could potentially be the last target 36, uh, 3610. But it's still here it is 3610 guys. Still in still in. let's see if we could squeeze this a little bit more just a little bit more. Don't have a trail yet. 
I am hands on here. Don't have a trail just yet. I'm watching all the indices for possible price action. We are 30, no, 40, no, 20 seconds away from the next decision. 30 seconds away from the next decision. In 30 seconds, well, actually 15 seconds right now, if we start trading about 36.10, we need 36 and a quarter, we're zipping higher. We're zipping higher. We're gonna look for that ultimate, ultimately, let's see if we get it into the 13. So it's gonna be point by point right now. It's gonna be point by point. Still trailing, still looking for the next trail. Just wait for it, wait for it. We're, we wanna give ourselves a chance. Let's see if we have another squeeze here. The Dow is going, it's trying to a little bit more robust. We're getting a little baby tail on the one minute and the two minute, two minute inside bar. Every second is important right now into the decision of the of price action continuation. Every second counts. In 10 seconds, we're gonna have a new decision. And in 10 seconds, we need to see the price over 3609.25. 3609.25, we're gonna go higher. That's what we need for higher. For those of you that have small accounts, you can start trailing 36.07. Small accounts only, 36.07. Here we go. Do, do, do. Okie dokie, here we go. Rotating. All right, let's see that 10 again. 10 again, come on, it tapped once, here it is, here it is again. It needs to pivot, pivot, pivot into this area and snap up, snap, snap, snap. NASDAQ is into a big pressure point right here. I think we should all raise the stops to 36.07, raise the stop, 36.07. It's better to have something than nothing. I'm telling you guys. Like, I don't know, this market is really squirrely. Not liking NASDAQ right here, the way it's acting. All right. Uh, 3607.25 is the low. We're tapping onto the 10 EMA on the one minute. We're still holding by the tick holding by the tick and NASDAQ is rotating down. And I'm out, all out 3607. Hey, Riz, welcome to the program. Hey guys, would you like to say hello to Riaz? He just signed up for the Power Income Futures day trading course. He will be joining us on December 14th through the 21st. Welcome to the group and welcome to the family.
<laughs> oh my goodness, it's 12.05 a.m. And okay, okay, I promise you, I, I think we're done today. <laughs> I think we're done today. Hey, Amy. Welcome, you're gonna love this. Yeah, when the market is cooperating. Okay, here it is, guys. Oh, see, I didn't want to live through this pullback here because I didn't want to lose all my money and put the stop and break even. But now this is the hook, guys. You see the release? You see the short squeeze? You see the shallow pullback? This is the mini hook, guys. Mini hook. We break above 10, 10 and a quarter. That's actually what we needed. And it uh, just printed up uh, 10.5, 10, 10, 10 and a half. And then it could start short squeezing towards 13 and 15, but it becomes very iffy here. But see, th this would have been, so I didn't want to wait for this pullback because I, we would be giving up another two points and I didn't want to do that. Uh, but yeah. Okay, here, is, and it's going now. Uh, all right, I don't, I'm not really sure that we're gonna have another trade today. I mean, I'm happy with this. Um, with the result today, not bad. Like I said it this morning, you know, we need to focus on big wins, small wins, break even trades, very small losses. Okay, and we started off with a very asymmetric trade. Like I said, the 15 minute looks very bullish, but are we going to risk all this? You know what I mean? So like I said, it can potentially run into 13 to 14 and then turn around. The problem is that I saw that NASDAQ was having problems here into this. Now it's minor resistance, it's not support, and we have the 10 EMA. So you can see here just a little doji. The next decision here is going to come in about two minutes, three minutes, three minutes. And also we have the Dow into resistance here. We have the Dow into resistance. And we have uh, also Russell into resistance. But all right, so not bad, guys. Not a bad, not a bad day so far. I was just getting so bored. Like, oh man, I don't know if we're gonna have a trade. It's, it, it was just all over the price, was all over the place in the morning. Uh, and it, we were getting out of my, you know, real comfort zone. This is the time when I like to be done, like done. You know what I mean? Like done. 11 o'clock, 11.15. I don't like to continue beyond this point. Not unless we're in a swing trade or, you know, more of a trendy kind of trade. See, it's, uh, it's not releasing above that 10. It's just stuck into that 10.
Yeah, re- <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, less, you know, there are less opportunities uh, from um, from this time uh, into 12 o'clock into the doldrums. And then the doldrums, actually the doldrums set between 1130 and about 215 or so. And I don't like to trade doldrums, I actually step away from the market. Um, I watch my swings, but you know, in, in the equities, but I don't like to day trade. I like to day trade when the volume is on uh, and we're getting better volume. Um, I mean, bigger volume, the institutional volume in the morning, 9.30 to 11 o'clock. And then at 11 o'clock, uh, I like to be done. I like to be done. There's really trying to inch in from this 15 minute rotation. But you know, you can see here that not a lot of buyers are excited. In fact, here what I'm watching is that Russell getting very strong. See what it did? It just uh what Russell did here was it uh took all the retail traders out. I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna continue back to the top of the range. Here, there are two scenarios that can happen in the Dow. Two scenarios, okay? Let me see what the high is here is 72, then we have 70. All right, so over 75 right here um, in YM. YM over 75. Um, let's put this on the five here. This could look either uh, in either direction. So it doesn't have, this was clearly to the upside, not to the downside, but this range right here, it can have a double take. It can be bullish over 75 or it can be bearish. Let me see the 15 minute here. Uh, we still need three minutes, but if we go below this, what is it, 35? Below 35, this can potentially be a short over this high, it could be a squeeze uh, back into this, let's say almost 600, almost, not 600, not 600, but almost 90, let's say. It could be 75 to like 75, 80, 85, 90. Those would be the targets. Um, and here we also have a doji. Let, let's put it on the 15 minute here. <laughs> okay, have a good night, Riaz. I'll see you tomorrow. And welcome again. Okay, so here we are, a little bit more bullish doji here into the M and &E SMP. We may go into the short squeeze here. I don't have a good, and you can see here that the risk is 100% asymmetric on everything. Russell is the one that is having the big bounce. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Uh, we still have one second left to the next decision. Okay, here we go. Brand new 15 minute candles pointing out a little bit shorter here. 
I don't know if this is going to pull back, let's say into the 500, create the hook on the 15 and push higher just to do the unexpected, because I think that there may be a lot of retail traders that are going to read this as a short. Like I said, under that 25, we can potentially continue to 500, but then 500 is decision point again. And this is very deceiving right here. This can be potentially be very deceiving. Oh, I don't see anything here, guys. Just snoozy again. And I, uh, in all reality, I'm done. We're going to do a little recap. And then this is all for today. We did good. We ended, on a, again, another solid month. But I'm go going to give you an update of what I can potentially see in the market for the afternoon session to point you in the right direction. Um. There we go. All right. So uh, the Dow has been a little weaker since we started the trading session. And in fact, it had a big pressure zone into the 740 and it started to rotate back down. Like I said, that uh, 525 under that 525, 523 can potentially go back down to 500. There was that doji on the five minute that was pretty much bullish above bearish below. Uh, and uh, YM was actually the first index that rotated back down. Okay, and here we have it back into the 500. Now remember, this is a big pressure point. This is resistance, this is support right here. You, you may wanna take a snapshot of this and of these levels. So we're back into the double bottom formation, right? From this morning, we also noticed that we have a high and a lower high right here. Uh, if we start breaking, the more we break below 500, there's a strong possibility that we may continue further lower into the 264. Now, remember, there are a lot of shenanigans that are happening into the end of the month. And there is the end of the month books, the end of the month calibration that is uh, that is happening. There are a lot of ex-dividend stocks. Uh, and again, th there are a lot of things that are happening right now. So the price action may not be true to what's going to happen going into uh, December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So keep that in mind. So we may have a turnaround Tuesday tomorrow. We may be very flaky or sideways or a little bit bearish on the trading session today. And tomorrow we may have a turnaround, uh, turnaround Tuesday this is usually what happens. And especially when we have right now uh, the uh, end of the month. But I'm really glad we... Uh, literally closed a very, very solid month again, okay? So we had continuous positive month, month after month, this whole entire year. And in fact, last, last year as well, the, the last month where we lost and it was like a very tiny, 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 tiny loss, it was more, more of, of a break-even month, was in 2018 in, uh, in November. Uh, so we're doing really well. Um, 
Also, the m and &E &E is back to the bot double bottom formation. We noticed that 3,600 is being defended. We did have a zip lower, 10 points lower into this point. We came up a little bit higher and popped off of this 200 SMA on the 1A chart, double bottom formation, like I said. This can potentially be, if this area is not gonna hold, we may land into the next area of support, which is into the 3580 all the way. You can see this chunk right here to the left-hand side from 80 to 60 right here. Uh, but this is, like I said, it has to be proved by price. Uh, we also see a double top formation. We also had a double bottom formation here. We had uh, the overnight trading session took the price a little bit lower into the 200 SMA and then it snapped back up, but it didn't have enough energy to challenge the prior high. So it made a lower high, which made it a little bit weaker for the New York trading session. But again, the uh, decision point is going to come into the 3600. And just as with option expiration, okay, uh, this is very interesting because right now, I'm seeing that these uh, indices are kind of pinned into whole numbers. So we're having the Dow pinned into the 29,500. We're having this 3,600 pin into the m and &E uh, So I'm not gonna do anything into the, over, uh, into the uh, afternoon trading session uh, for uh, day trading. Like I said, I like to focus in the first two hours, see if there is anything happening there and uh, uh, definitely take action. But other than that, uh, let's move on to NASDAQ. NASDAQ was a little bit stronger. Like I said, it maintained the uptrend and we have the higher highs and higher lows. Now we've had a first high here and a lower high right here. We had a lower high. We still don't have a pivot yet. So we cannot, this is still not yet a downtrend. Okay, so we have to decide. So it, it will be decided. If we start breaking the uh, 12,200 level right here, then we're going to be back into the bullish territory as this is, a, again, a really wide area of support. And take a look here. Very interesting. Uh, we have a low here into the 1280. And this tail came really very close into the upper 80s right here. At, I would say, yeah, 85, 86 or so. So uh, we do have a double bottom formation there. So it was tap, hard tap and push to the upside right here. So it came back up. And also RTY, RTY was the strongest indice, especially in the overnight trading session. It had a triple bottom. It had a double top right here. Very nice double top, by the way, into the 60s. We're still gonna monitor Russell for the possibility of a swing. And I will update you guys on that if that should happen on our private feed. Uh, also for um, uh, for oil, oil is range bound. Remember, the OPEC meeting is going to take that decision tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to have some uh, more price action activity. Uh, also, what's very interesting here is that we're having a little rotation in GC, still not uh, not really excited about. I would like to see how we close today. So uh, based on how we close today, I may send a signal out uh, if we're going to be setting up for a very aggressive short squeeze that may take the price back into the 20s and 25. But that's going to be a, like a short term kind of trade. It's not going to be like, you know, one of those swings is possibly going to happen super fast if it's going to happen. The four hour is already rotating here. So the four hour, uh, the excuse me, the four hour high here was 80, what is it? Uh, 78.2, so 78.5. Um, yeah, it, possibly 80, 80 spot. It's bouncing off of the 80 spot, but it has a lot of pressure into this top of the range right here into the 88. So that's why I don't wanna keep it on my, um, you know, on my bullish list right now. Uh, definitely why I'm, like I said, recapping everything, why I'm is back into support into the 500 decision will be made. I would definitely in the afternoon trading session, let me get my cursor out to show you exactly what I would, what I would be looking for. So if we get a break down here, I don't want to be the first one that is going to participate in the break. So I'm expecting probably a few candles to the downside here. Uh, and where I would like to initiate the trade. So most likely we're going to get a bounce. And if we get that bounce all the way into the 500 or even below 500, 
then that to me would be uh, prime shorting material here. But this is going to take a little bit more time uh, to develop. So it's probably going to take a couple hours until it develops. Uh, at least so possibility for the afternoon trading session. So look for a break of this 500 level right here. This is the 500 level. This is the breakdown. If you want to trade it here, the, uh, the problem is that, let's see, uh, you can apply a stop 36.11. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what would be the stop here? Hold on. 36.11 is for a mini SMP. For YM, that would be... Uh, 580, 580. So 580 would be your, uh, your stop 580. So it's still going to be wide stop. So under 500 with 80, uh, 80 point, 80 to 90 point stop right here. Uh, if you want to take it, uh, short and look for a continuation lower, I would much rather wait, you know, let the price slice divide whatever it wants to do. And then look for um, the retest. I love trading the retest because those are the ones that are uh, in, uh, that are putting the money into our uh, our accounts. Uh, but I'm telling you, like this is going to uh, be very, very, uh, very hard day for the rest of the day. Just keep in mind, it's the last day of the month. A lot of balancing, a lot of calibration. Uh, also for the mini SMP, this is support right here under 3600. Also look for the slide lower. Okay, I don't know that may take the price here or here or all the way into this area right here. Uh, don't be tempted to jump in short. And then if you have another uh, rotation with a retest, this would be this would be the area right here. I'm going to put an X on it. Uh, this would be the area of shorting. So this obviously is going to take some time, especially this is a one hour, so it can possibly take a couple hours. Uh, also, the uh, NASDAQ is trading into support spot right now into the 170. You're going to see the tail right now. Wait for the big move to the downside. Wait for the retest. And again, this is going to be the retest spot, but it's not ready now because now it's into the uh, stage is into the distribution stage and into the decision stage right now. So you don't want to take it right now. That's why I would rather wait, look, and then retest. And then here with Russell, this is very interesting because like I said, if we're going to have some kind of formation here um, going into one o'clock based on the 4 H chart, I would very much like to uh, see if we could dab into a little bit of a swing here in Russell, but not now. It's not ready for anything. So don't just jump in. The trade right now it's not ready but in case this uh, scenario is going to play out uh with the down with the uh back up and the retest once again this is going to be the retest area but again do not take it short now if you want to take it short now it's going to be like i said use the 15 minute pivot for the high uh to position size and also to place your stops uh, for the upside, let's see for the upside. So this is the bearish case, right? So let's see it now for the bullish case. So for the bullish case, any kind of rotation based on the top of the hour, and that would be at 12 o'clock, 12.15, 12.30 or so, look for a one hour rotation that is playing out off of the double bottom. So one hour rotation, you need to see uh, this candle move above the high and for a short squeeze higher. Unfortunately, we have these moving averages right here, the 20, uh, the 50 and the 10 exponential that are creating a little bit more selling pressure and that short squeeze is not gonna be, uh, that. let me tell you like that short squeeze is gonna be shortly lived. Uh, and also, so rotations are going to play a big role uh, as well into the mini S&P. So look for rotation points here, look for, this is actually a bit more interesting here into, um, uh, into YM, uh, I'm sorry, into NASDAQ, because NASDAQ is forming this inside bar right here. So anything that trades uh, in 30 minutes from now above this 90, it's going to possibly send the price into a short squeeze 10 points higher into 200. But that's another decision point. So it, it's like choke. So the trade is not, it does not have any kind of tradable void. It's just, uh, it's just really squeezed into these parameters that are really messy to trade. And listen, we made our money today. We don't need to trade for the rest of the day. I mean, I made my goal for today. I, I'm like super fine. 
Uh, but I'm telling you, don't trade this kind of uh, this kind of chop into the market uh, right now. Uh, also, uh, like I said, oil, you know, decision pending. I'm going to watch this. Uh, like I said, one last look at natural gas here and natural gas coming back down. I'm going to take it back to the daily daily formation. Like I said, uh, it's going to have to uh, trade over this three dollars in order to gain some velocity for higher. Also, I want to bring the bonds here uh, super quick. Bonds are very messy. They are trading. Th this was, um, again, uh, a bear scenario with this cross, the 50 and the 200 SMA, the death cross right here just created a selling pressure. And now we're creating a little hook. So we had the wash down, the pop up, and then a, uh, and then the, uh, the 20 SMA caught the price and boom, back a little bit uh, higher right now. I'm still not excited about, uh, about the bonds in any way, shape or form. Uh, let's take a quick look at uh, the um, lumber. Uh, you can see the lumber daily right here, uh, popped a little bit higher into the today's trading session and did a very shallow rotation here. I did not enter it again. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. Um, unless you have some charts that you need some uh, answers to, uh, I am off right now. We had a really good session today. Uh, we went for um, the real um, setup, and that's how trading should be. So let me know right now, guys, if you have any chart requests, any symbols that you would like me to take a look at, that's fine. Other than that, this is a wrap for today's trading session. I'll see you guys tomorrow where we have brand new monthly candles, which is very exciting. Uh, we're going to have these candles that are going to be very strong for our trading. All right, let's take a quick look at Chewy for Lori. Okay, oops, what did I do here? All right, here we go, Chewy. Extending higher. This is very bullish this week. New high on the week. It's closing in on a massive, massive, massive monthly. So it should be heading higher. Uh, we did some projections on it. And let's take a quick look again. This is longer term. Uh, we have the next target into the $77, well, 77 to 7720-ish, okay? And uh, the next target into 83. So Chewy is definitely very strong. Yeah, these would be the targets that I would look for, Lori, 77 bucks. Uh, 75, 75, it just printed today. I would look for 77, 77 next target. It just snapped above this 100% retracement and then now it's entering these extensions and it's into those extensions. Yes, Chewy, very nice. Chewy, very nice. Um, TLRY, actually TLRY is on my watch list. Okay, uh, today it popped and it came back down. Um, the weekly chart rotated. So this 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 was the entry, uh, $7 and uh, about six, $7.68 was the entry right here. But now it got rejected by this uh, uh, 50 SMA. And uh, also it ran into this cluster of resistance here, okay? And uh, it's waiting decision. So it needs to, but from the weekly chart, it needs William to trade over this um, 50 SMA. Once it trades and if it closes above this 50 SMA by the end of the week, it's going to be very bullish. Uh, and you can see here that it popped a little bit. Okay, like I said, this, this was the entry right here. So th this was a segment of entry from this pullback. It's, it's getting higher. So I don't know if you're in or not, but to me, this is not an entry if you're looking for an entry, but if you're in, just stay in. You just have to make sure that you place your stop below this 50 SMA right here because it's just going back and forth, back and forth. All right, of course. Any other charts, any other requests? Okay, Thomas, uh, details on how top step works. Okay, let me just go to top step. All 
All right, let me just put it up here. And I'm pretty sure you guys um, received uh, an email from me with uh, some deals that are going on with uh, Top Step Trader. Okay, let me stop the share right here. Let me start the screen share. All right, here we go. All right, so Top Step offers uh, traders the possibility to trade with their capital, but before getting there, uh, you have to prove that you can uh, that you can trade. You could also start a free trial. You guys have my link, which comes with extra perks along the uh, along the uh, you know along, uh, and also. So how it works, first of all, you have to prove that uh, you you are making profit. And we have a lot of traders here um, in the trading room that trade with Top Step. And I could give you, you know, some ideas and some insights on how to make that work and how to make that work for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk you through. So first of all, you have to prove that you uh, you know how to trade. Uh, and that you're consistently profitable. And obviously you need to have a trading plan for that. And that's why a lot of traders of that trade with Top Step uh, trade with me because I provide the trades, provide the guidance uh, and give you the risk, tailor risk. So if you decide to opt for one of the, um, uh, let's say for one of the uh, combines that they have available, I can help you personalize that combine so we never uh, you know, exceed the risk limit and you're always keep, you always keep on track. So you have to also demonstrate that you can manage risk. So what this means is basically as they are stating right here is consistency. So not blowing up your accounts. So this is to keep traders on the right path and this is good. And they come with a series of guidelines that you're not allowed to trade news. And what do we do here in the trading room? We never trade news, right? We wait until the price settles. So you wait for those perfect setups to uh, form out. Once you prove that you are not blowing up your account, once you prove that you're making profit and you have some profit goals that you need to go through, then you're gonna earn a funded account. And you get to keep the first $5,000 in profit and then 80% after that. So every a uh, profit that you make from that $5,000, uh, Top Step is going to take 20% of that. And if you ask me, wow, the, of course, right? Because they're providing you the, the, the capital, right? So they're, they have huge risk invested in you. All right. So as you can see here, hold on, let me just scroll and see where they have their, um, okay, here it is, I think. Okay, here it is. Okay, now you have to choose your account size. Then, of course, uh, these account sizes uh, come with subscriptions, right? Because they're offering you a chance to offer uh, to offer you uh, funding, but you basically need to prove that you can trade. So. Uh, they offer $30,000 combines. They offer $50,000, $100,000, and $150,000, okay? So they, these are the regular day trading combines. And then we're going to go to swing trading uh, in a short time to uh, give you some uh, ideas about that as well. So when they are saying that, uh, and again, the subscription price obviously is going to be lower for 30 k and higher for 150 k You can check that out on your end. Uh, and then again, you can see here that you have to make profit target per step. So it's not per day or anything like that. Uh, is the profit target is the amount of net profit required per step. So it's not per trade. So you have to make $2,000. Now, maximum position size, three contracts. Now, you guys know that I provide you with a position size video where I teach you how to position size. And 100% uh, of the traders that are in this room right now and that are trading prop accounts, they succeed and they make it to the ultimate level into funding and they get paid uh, because they know how to position size. Now, the daily loss limit is $500. So this is very tricky right here because usually if you are trading a $30,000 account and if you have a $500 
daily stop limit, you have to divide that by three because remember the rule of our trading room is to take three trades per day. And that is $166. Now, based on my experience in the market and based on this volatility, you will have to risk $160 with a full size contract, which in my personal opinion is quite impossible. So this is not, and, and again, this is my opinion. You guys could do whatever you, uh, whatever you want. But the, the problem is that in a volatile market, uh, the risk size, meaning the difference between the entry and the stop is wide. So take a look at, uh, for example, today we had the M&E S&P. Let's say we had a, a 10 point stop. Now a 10 point stop, right? With a $50, uh, a $50, uh, uh, $50 um, um, a point, right? Uh, per, uh, per, per 50, 50, $50 per point, that is $500, right? So if the trade doesn't work, you would blow up this $500 and bam, just like that. And remember in trading, you don't put all your eggs in one trade, like in here, like in $500, because if you have a trade like today where we risk, let's say 10 points, okay. And like I said, from the beginning, we have a, a very asymmetric risk. This is not gonna be a good option for volatile markets. And I find that a lot of traders that opt for this 30K, uh, they're gonna have a very hard time making their target because it's a volatile environment and you're never gonna get that risk amount, okay? Uh, and then weekly loss limit, and this is a step two, none. And then you're having trailing, uh, uh, trailing max drawdowns uh, of $1,500 and you're having a monthly price of $150. So this is the subscription per month, $150. Most of the traders that are into this room and are very successful and they made it live or they have like a tinty winties of uh, tinty winty uh, uh, area until they get to the fun to fund it. Like um, the amount of successful traders that we have here with the trading combine is it just is it, just enormous. All right. So, uh, yeah, they are Brad. Lots of traders in this room. Lots of traders. If you guys want to come forward and say uh, if you have maintained uh, the top step funded account for six months or greater, uh, if you guys are still in the room right now, just please uh, say yes or uh, what your experience was, a yay or a nay. Okay, so um, in fact, Brad, last week I received an email uh, from one of our members here. He only trades until 11 o'clock. Most of them trade until 11 o'clock. And uh, he has been with Top Step for over a year and a half, and he has been, you know, collecting. Uh, I'm not going to give names, but I'm going to ask if I can make it public. Uh, he is into the 150k, okay, account. So you can see here for 30k account, it's, uh, you know, it's 150. For a 50k account, it's 165. For a 100k account, it's 325, and for 150k, is 375. Now, again, the biggest the biggest issue is not the full it's not the contract because remember that with this 30k, when are you gonna trade three contracts? You can barely trade it with one contract. So it's very, very hard to succeed with a 30k. Um, 50k is like so and so because remember your daily risk limit is a thousand dollars. And then you divide that by three, and then your risk per trade is $300. So you're going to look for trades that are about $300 so you can trade them with a full-size contract, okay? Then the 100K is a little bit more generous because it has a daily loss limit of $2,000, which is a little bit more workable. And if you divide that by three, then you have $670 per trade that you can risk. Now that's more like it because this is where you could actually, so if you have this account with top step, you could actually uh, trade volatile markets. So for instance, the mini SMP trade today that we had and it started off with, uh, with uh, a higher risk based on the current environment, but yeah, it had a $500 risk uh, 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 today. Uh, so your, uh, that would enter your uh, parameters. Okay. So this, um, this is, uh, a, I would say starting with a 100K account, this is more doable. And of course the 150 account where your daily loss limit is $3,000 and you divide that by three. And obviously that, um, um, 
Uh, Lori, I'm going to talk about that, the micros. That's, that's actually a really good option. Okay. All right. So the $3,000 you divided by three, obviously you risk $1,000 on a trade. Well, here it says that you can uh, trade with 15 contracts. That is a non-volatile environment, guys. It's a non-volatile environment because it all boils down to risk per trade, okay? So you should not risk more than $1,000 on this trade and then position size for that. Just view the video 100 times. Before you get into the trade, you don't even have to view it a hundred times. Just take notes, do that template of how much you need to risk, make that template for a thousand dollars. And then here you have it. And that's $375 per, uh, per, um, per month. And again, here you have the account parameters, profit target. Um, this is step one. This is step two. They want to prove profitability. You want also want to, they also want to see if you can manage the risk. Um, uh, like I said, trade only trades permitted uh, products during uh, permitted times. And you have a list here with explanations. All positions must be closed prior to uh, 3, uh, 10 p.m. Central time, et cetera. So you have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, information uh, that is present here on the website. And uh, let me see where that is here. So, oops, sorry about that. Um, let's see, they do have micros. Let me just uh, check and see. Um, let's see if they have in here. I don't know. Oh, I, and another thing is that another thing I have the link. Hold on a second. Let me see where my link is. And I'll send you to that. Um, see, it's not here. Uh, the other thing that is really great is that you can have the TS Trader uh, as your platform. If you want to trade, you know, at the beginning. And by the way, you can switch. Um, but you can trade with them. And the, you have uh, no platform fees here. So there's nothing to pay. And if you offer Ninja or TradeStation, uh, these are uh, the fees um, included with uh, with it. And let me see where I have my, because they send me deals for you guys and I'm just passing them along. Let me see where the link is. Because with micros, you have a lot more flexibility. Uh, so if you're not opting for that 100K or 100 plus K uh, for this, uh, a really good decision is to uh, opt for, uh, for the micros. Just uh, let me see here. And by the way, they have it available for Forex as well. Okay, let me see. Where's the micro? Okay, here it is, the swing trading combine. Okay, let's see it here. All right, here it is. Okay, here it is, swing trade, swing trade. You get a swing trade and this is $110 a month. And again, again, here, these are very attainable, $1,000 profit target, uh, five micro lot size, again, position size, you notice that they're mentioning the position size, weekly loss limit. So again, because this is swing trading, you have a $500 weekly loss limit. And what I highly recommend is that you divide this $500, the weekly loss limit by five. Okay, so your risk per day is about $100 in this. And then you could trade the mini S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, and micro YM. Hold positions overnight and over the weekend. Okay, same rules as step one and step two. So if you guys want, I'm going to share with you the link right here. And this is for the micros. The, the, this is very flexible, you know, um, it, I, I just love it. Every, you know, I, I just love this version and I find a lot of, uh, Francis, I don't know if you're here, but Francis, you opted 
uh, you opted for this. So most of the traders that I know, they do have a swing and an 100K or over 100K account. So they do have two. Okay, they do have two. Um, all right, so this is it. Any other questions? Okay, oh, okay, you gotta leave. Okay, cool. All right, guys, let me know if you guys have any questions. You have the link in there and this also falls under that um, deal. Okay, you recommend it. Okay, Francis. Okay, and Francis gets live, by the way. Uh, John Carlo teased near all time low. Any way to trade it? Uh, Steve, I forget how. Uh, I think it's like a week or two weeks or something like that. I think it's like a week or two weeks. You can try uh, check it out. Okay, let's uh, point T here. Uh, you mean T? T is near all time low. Uh, am I missing something? Oh, AT and T. Uh, AT and T has support at twenty six. I I wouldn't trade it right now. Uh, this month was a little bit bullish, but you have a lot of resistance here. If you're in, you know, just leave it on. Okay, just leave it on. Uh, but um, it's not nearing any kind of decision right now not nearing any kind of decision. I wanna check something out here. And this would be like, you're, I think you're talking more about investment purpose than anything else. Okay, let's do quarterly. Uh, even the quarterly is messy. Bottom of the range right here, quarterly probably rotation. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I would just leave it alone. Okay. You're just bearish. Um, it's not that bearish and it's not that bullish. Okay. Not that, uh, not that, um, bearish. Uh, first of all, up, down, and look at these lows, low, higher, low, and now higher, low. Th this is kind of big resistance into the $44 is under a lot of pressure here. I would say if it trades under 25, 20, 26, actually under 26, so have it print at 25.90 or so, then it can start uh, moving lower. Yeah, that's, that's my take on it. All right, any other questions? All right, guys, this is a wrap. I'll see you guys tomorrow at nine o'clock Eastern. Remember, uh, brand new monthly candles are gonna start tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern. Let's take a look at them and evaluate them, okay? For uh, December. And remember, December carries a lot of volume. It's usually one of the most profitable trading months of the year. Okay. So it provides a lot of trading opportunities. December is phenomenal for day trading, phenomenal for swing trading. So it's altogether a really good month. And remember, uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about some obstacles into December. Uh, that we may have and also a little bit of slowdowns and remember it's going to have it's going to be a little bit uh, shorter month because of uh, the holidays we have Christmas uh, where the market is going to be closed on Christmas and the New Year's and it's going to be a little bit shorter month but uh, definitely it's going to be powerful so it's going to live up I hope it's going to live uh, live to its potential all right so you can see that right now just a one last look uh, on the market, YM, still into the 29,500. We're still coiling it around that 3,600 in S&P. And take a look, that NASDAQ is ramping up a little bit more here. And RTY, RTY is still under a lot of pressure, but it's still, um, you know, wait until the top of the hour and look at the hourly charts. Like I said, hourly charts may provide some more information uh, in that regard for the afternoon trading session. If you want to trade the afternoon trading session, I'm not a big fan, especially today. Okay. All right, guys, this is it for today. <laughs> Looking for Santa rally. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome guys. Thanks so much. I will see you guys. Uh, I will see you. I will see you guys tomorrow at nine o'clock. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Bye.